This is a short paper that emerged from an unusual event that I observed in 2018 when working at, with the Crested Macaques, uh, the Yaki and Sulawesi. And the paper is titled Successful Adoption of Non-Orphaned Infant by a Paris Nursing Female in Yaki, Sulawesi Crested Macaque. And it's by myself, Eve Holden, Anche Engelhart, Dia Perita Sari Farajala, and Katie Slocum. Introduction. Adoption is a widespread but infrequent behaviour across social species, such as African wild dogs, Atlantic bottlenose dolphins, common gulls, common vampire bats, eastern grey kangaroos, emperor penguins, greater rheas, northern elephant seals, and polar bears. In these cases, adoption happened when the mother was killed, disappeared, or the offspring was abandoned or kidnapped, but to be successful, i.e. the offspring survives until they become independent of their caregiver, either the offspring or the adoptive parent had to be able to meet the offspring's nutritional and care needs. Adoption can fail due to the adoptive parent's inability to provide the necessary care, for example in chimpanzees. For primates in particular, successful adoption can may be more widespread than previously thought, with a spate of recent case studies across diverse species and genera. Successful adoption has been observed in three species of howler monkeys, um, infant age approximately two months in Alouette Karaya, uh, two months in Alouette Guariba clamitans, and four to five months in Alouette Saniculus, and has been reported for wild chimpanzees at all long-term research sites. Two successful intercommunity adoptions of infants from outside the adoptive mother's community have been observed in bonobos, 2.6 and 3 years old, and one case each in black-fronted titi monkeys, approximately 2 months old, and Angola black and white colobus monkeys, although in this last case the adoptive mother's biological infant died and they were the infant was approximately 4 or 5 months. And there have been recent reports of adoption in free-ranging populations of four macaque species, with successful adoption occurring in three of these. One newborn macaque fuscata was unsuccessful, but then successfully we had at six months a uh, macaque mulata chileensi, um, at 3.5 months macaque radiata, and at three weeks old, um, Macaca tibetana. Here we report a case of successful adoption in wild yaki, also known as Sulawesi crested macaques or Macaca nigra. The infant was adopted at approximately two weeks old, while the adoptive mother's own infant was approximately three weeks old, both very young. The adopted infant's mother was still alive and remained in the group. Both mothers were multiparous, which means they had multiple infants or multiple offspring in the past, and of similar age and rank, though exact dominance rank data were unavailable. To our knowledge, this is one of the youngest successful infant adoptions, alongside the case of a three-week-old Tibetan macaque um, reported in wild non-human primates. Because of the rarity of adoption in non-human species, each individual case expands our understanding of the conditions under which successful adoption can occur and the potential reproductive benefits to the infant's biological mother. Materials and methods. We received ethical approval from the University of York Animal Welfare and Ethical Review Body. Research permits were granted by the Indonesian Ministry of Research, Technology and Higher Education, RISTEC DICTI, and from Balai Konservasi uh, Sumberdaya Alam Sulawesi Utara, um, Beka Estea Sulut. Uh, myself and Andre Pasetha, hereafter AP, observed the PB1B group of Wild Yaki and Macaca Negra Project, MNP, uh, Tankoko Nature Reserve, North Sulawesi, Indonesia, from March 2018 to September 2019. MNP was established in 2006, and during our study period, PB1B uh, was one of four fully habituated groups of Yaki. So we have Rambu Sato, Rambu Dua, PB1B, and PB1A. During the study period, we collected data from 19 adult females and 20 infants, eight females and 12 males in PB1B. We conducted full day focal follows on mother infant dyads from zero to 12 months old with instantaneous scan data collected on the focal pair at 15 minute intervals. We recorded mother and infant activity, social partners and mother infant proximity. During the two week post adoption, 
4th to the 18th of April 2018, uh, myself and AP conducted daily follows of the two mothers, adoptive and biological, and two infants. After that period, we resumed collecting data at the same schedule as for other mother-infant dyads, i.e. one full day follow at approximately uh, one and a half month intervals. Uh, more information on data preparation and analysis procedures can be found in the appendix um, and all analyzed data are also found in the supplementary materials. Results. Between the 6th to the 12th of March 2018, Fiona gave birth to her sixth infant, Fufu, who is female. And between the 17th and 25th of March 2018, Christy gave, also gave birth to her sixth infant, Kiara, also female. The birth date ranges reflect when each mother was last seen without an infant and when she was first seen with an infant. Kiara was last seen with Christy on the morning of the 3rd of April 2018. On the 4th of April 2018, at approximately 9.30, Fiona was first seen carrying both Fufu, who was at this point 23 to 29 days old, and Kiara, who was 10 to 18 days old. No injuries were observed on Fiona, Fufu, Christy, or Kiara, and all appeared to be healthy on the day of adoption. During the two weeks post-adoption, we did not observe any attempts by Christy to retrieve Kiara from Fiona, despite some proximity between the dyad. So Christy was within five meters of Kiara on 11 out of 144 scans where mother-infant distance was available. On the 9th of April 2018, Kiara transferred from Fiona to an unidentified female juvenile who carried her periodically throughout the day. This was the first time that Kiara appeared distressed, vocalizing and attempting to escape from the juvenile, who held her back if she tried to approach any other individual. Christy still did not attempt to retrieve Kiara, despite some proximity, two out of 23 scans within five meters. Fiona retrieved Kiara that afternoon, but for the next few days, the juvenile carried Kiara periodically, and on the 11th of April, the juvenile took Kiara full-time, including carrying her into the sleeping tree. Kiara seemed distressed, uh, tired, and weakened from not nursing. I'm going to insert the supplementary video here rather than direct you to it. I think that's easiest. Kiara cover video, something at 16.22. Kiara, lips next to Fiona. The distance between Kiara and Fiona about 2 meters, one half meter. Kiara distress, Kiara scream. Finally, on 14th of April 2018, Fiona retrieved Chiara, who remained with Fiona, henceforth. Fiona nursed, carried, and cared for both Fufu and Chiara until they were weaned. 
um, figure A1 in the appendix. Uh, from the day after the adoption for four days, Fiona appeared to be unwell with mucus around her eyes and nose. Again, that's the figure shown on the screen right now. Um, but she continued to care for both infants throughout and was able to recover. To probe the impact of adoption on the adoptive mother and her biological and adoptive offspring, we compared time spent in contact with the mother and nursing of other typically raised infants in the same age bracket. Table one shows that at both zero to six months and six to 12 months, Kiara, the adopted, but not Fufu, the biological, spent significantly more time in contact with Fiona than typically raised mother-infant dyads in the group. Both Kiara and Fufu spent more time nursing than other typically raised infants of similar age when both 0 to 6 and 6 to 12 months old. Discussion. This case of adoption in wild yaki comes alongside other recent cases of successful adoption in wild non-human primates. Pre-weaning is thought to be a particularly dangerous time for an infant to be adopted, although these studies demonstrate infant age uh, or adoptive mother's lactation does not always ensure infant survival. While successful adoption of a newborn infant has been observed in a zoo-housed group of Japanese macaques, to our knowledge, this is one of the youngest recorded cases of successful adoption in wild primates, with Kiara being approximately two weeks old at the time of transfer. At this early developmental stage, parental care is critical, and we were surprised that Kiara survived. Uh, there were days when I was not sure she would. Fiona was an experienced mother who was lactating to nurse a similar aged infant, Fufu, which likely contributed to Kiara's survival. This case was strikingly like that described in Tibetan macaques, where a young infant of a multiparous female was kidnapped or transferred to another multiparous female with a similar aged biological infant, who then continued to care for both infants with no attempt from the adopted infant's biological mother to retrieve them post-transfer. From the infant perspective, Kiara spent more time in body contact with her adoptive mother than Fufu and typically raised infants in the group, potentially in response to the stressful transfer event. Both Fufu and Kiara spent more time nursing than other infants, but it is unclear whether the subsequent reduction in time for social interactions may negatively impact the social development of either infant. Despite being a risky strategy, if adoption is successful, the biological mother may incur fitness benefits. Christie's infant Kiara survived and Christie started ovulating again within two months of the adoption, giving birth to another infant, Camilla, uh, also female, on the 11th of November 2018. In contrast, this adoption was costly for the adoptive mother, in addition to the considerable energetic costs of nursing and caring for two infants simultaneously, both of whom spent more time than other infants nursing, reducing time for Fiona to forage. Fiona did not give birth to another infant until the 6th of November 2019, almost a year after Christy. Despite these costs in both this case and that of Tibetan macaques, the motivation to take an infant and provide alloparental care seems to have come from the adoptive mothers. What drives this motivation remains unknown, although it may be a byproduct of selection for maternal care. Further, as Yaki are female philopatric, Fiona may benefit from Kiara's support in adulthood, and a follow-up study could assess their adult relationship. It is also important to note that the genetic relationship between Christy and Fiona is unknown. The alloparental costs incurred by Fiona may also have been offset by inclusive fitness benefits, as found in two other macaque adoption cases. In Tibetan macaques, the infant's adoptive mother was the granddaughter of the infant's biological mother. And in Taihang San macaques, the orphaned infant was adopted by her older sister, with her father also providing care. There may also be hormonal drivers of maternal and allomaternal care, but we were not able to assess these in the current study. Allomaternal care is well documented in macaques, and our observation introduces a fifth macaque species to the adoption database. These species exhibit the full range of macaque social tolerance, from despotic macaca mulata to tolerant macaca nigra, indicating that social tolerance within this genus is not predictive of successful adoption. Sociality may still play a role, though, for five cases of adoption in bonnet macaques, 
infant survival was best explained by mother sociality, not infant age, sex, or adoptive mother rank. Our observation was the first recorded successful and intragroup case of adoption by Yaki at Tankoko, but researchers have observed two other cases of unsuccessful intergroup adoptions in 2010 and 2016. The infrequency of adoption makes systematic study challenging, and yet these cases suggest adoption to be more widespread than previously thought. As rare as full successful adoption is, in primates specifically and non-human species in general, we are slowly building a phylogeny for this behaviour through the accumulation of individual case studies such as this. Acknowledgements. We thank Andre Pasetha for his invaluable contribution to data collection, to directors and staff of the Macaca Negro project for facilitating the research, and Jérôme Micheletta, Julie Dubosc, and Laura Martinez Inigo for providing additional background information. We also thank the Indonesian State Ministry of Research and Technology, RISTEC, the Directorate General of Forest Protection and Nature Conservation, PHKA, and the Department of the Con for the Conservation of Natural Resources, Beka SDA, North Sulawesi, for providing for permission for this research. We thank Rismayanti for proofreading and editing our Bahasa Indonesia summary translation. Um, and this research was funded by an ERC consolidator grant awarded to Katie Slocum. And I was also funded on this project through another ERC Horizon 2020 grant. Uh, it's actually not so many references because it's a short paper yeah really cool behavior to observe um really interesting to see yeah adoption in another primate species i hope you have a good day bye